What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fall and Rise podcast. This is episode five. We want to thank once again Xenospace for letting us use this space right here and making this show possible. So shout out to them. Uh, how you feeling, man? I'm good, man. A lot better than last week. Got some rest. Got some food. Uh, had some banana pancakes today. So pretty legit. Yeah, pancakes. Yeah, pretty legit. Um, but yeah. So let's go start off with the, the winner there. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, before we start this episode, uh, oh yeah, the, the hourglass on. Huh? The hourglass. No, not no. Uh, well, after the. Oh yeah, my bad. I need to announce the winner for a contest giveaway that we had last week. Uh, we want to thank everybody who did, you know, follow the rules and apply to try to win the contest. Uh, we had to pick one, but there's going to be a lot more contests to come. So be on the lookout for that. Make sure to follow at Fall and Rise Pod to be updated on every contest that we're going to have. We're going to try and make this maybe a weekly thing. We'll see. Uh, but for this contest, for our VIP package, our winner is uh, at Christopher Addickson. Hope I'm saying that right. So thank you for applying. Uh, we're going to be Contact. contacting you to see how we're going to give you all the all the gear and stuff. So yeah. All right. Let's go. Now we can just flip it. Now okay. We now we go. Now we flip it. Now I got too excited. There you go. I got you soft. There you go. All right. Yeah. So uh, this week uh, you were off. Are you from this week? No, I didn't film this week, though, no. I didn't film this week. So you're really week. catching ball. Wow, it was a really, really eventful, huh? It's it's quite a weekend. quiet weekend, yeah. Banny uh, didn't play. Banny uh, didn't play, Dawson didn't play. Uh, you guys played, though. We played. Um, Momo played Momo against played. Uh, Utah Utah. Utah. They killed them. Utah. Utah. Yeah, they're getting led by Jeff Blondo and Ellie. It's kind of surprising, like, just mm-hmm. two players are just dominating like that. But I mean, Blondo's an elite player, Ellie's another for sure. player. For sure, for sure. So, like, it's not surprising that they're doing so well. Yeah. So, like, it's. It's a real weird. The role was only three and two, you know. Yeah, it's not easy. We're not used to it. From, yeah. From what? But I mean, they're gonna figure out. They're a tough team. We're actually playing them this week, so. Oh, they're playing this week. Oh, that's uh, what I'm, I'm gonna be there probably. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's at Momo, I believe. Is that Momo? Okay. No. Yeah, it's at Momo. It's at Momo. Then we play uh, Bani next week at Momo. That's so what everyone is waiting. So it's two exciting weeks. But I mean, we gotta get ready. I mean, Momo could beat us. No stress. No, they. Yeah. Just those two guys you mentioned. That's really We got two, two heads. On the dragon, you know, it's kind of a little tougher to yeah, it's a tough you know, team. No, they're not the three headed dragon that were last year, but yeah, yeah. still, still. And it's the up. fact that Momo has won, what was it? They won three, three, three in a row. Three in a row. Three in a row. And so the nationals. So, like, they know how to win. And same do not count the Same coaching staff, so, I mean, you can't really count them out at all. But, like, man, it's uh, it was quite, like, they beat them, and Champlain played today, they beat uh, John Abbott. Uh, so, yeah. cool. That bottom of half of the RCQ was interesting because, like, mm-hmm. Uh, like the top, I mean, you got Momo, uh, Momo you got Burbeth and Banyan kind of defeated up yeah, there, yeah. and then Dawson, kind of Dawson, 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 Dawson Momo, yeah. before that, it's all amazing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who, who's going to win when, they're all very competitive games, which is interesting, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But that was pretty quiet, pretty quiet. Stage at university was pretty interesting, um, yeah, yeah. UK, uh, UCAM uh, beat Concordia at home, and their whole home mm-hmm. in there, Alex went off, he had 23 and 11, again, like, I was telling people, like, UCAM lost their first couple games, they were talking because I was saying how you can be good and that Alex is gonna dominate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yo guys, you guys don't understand. Like, <laughs> I hated Alex when I coached him. I hate him. Like I'm no. not gonna I'm not somebody that likes he was gonna dominate. It's just frustrating because you wanna win and he's uh, the main reason you're not. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean Kevin Seville was great, Bondo was great, but Alex has this special little because he doesn't do it with skill, he does it with like, basketball. Oh yeah. man, it's so frustrating when someone's just like they're beating and he's beating our guys are just being smarter than them, yeah, yeah, yeah. hustle. And it was just, and then like the university, they had two close games: one against McGill, one against Bishop. They, they could have won, and then they beat Concordia, which is a very good team. Concordia beat of course, of course. So it's very interesting. They, they beat them quite handily. Um, so he's, he's, he's like he's a silent killer in a way, because like you watch a game, it doesn't seem like he's doing a lot, but you check check the, the stats, the stats afterwards, like. He, Dominates like all oh, legit. It's like those. It's like a girl. You know those girls that are like they dress super normal, yeah. and then you see them in a bikini that like the nicest body you ever seen in your life. You're like, that's what that's what Alex is. <laughs> like, cause this guy. That's the best analogy you could come up with. Not the best one. That's the one I got right now. But I was just thinking, like, you know, it's like unexpected. Like you're like, okay, it's just a normal player. He just does what he does. Oh, we played good defense, yeah. but then at the end he has 19 and 12, yeah, exactly. 25 and 10, and you're like, oh, okay, that's why we lost. Like he's not the most athletic. He's not the no, most that's, 
chilling, man. I'm just chilling. But he's still and it looks like he's putting no effort. If you watch him in a warm up line, I'm like, <laughs> no one would ever recruit him because yeah, yeah, he's yeah. walking, he's slow. But like, you tell, that's what, that's interesting because it kind of comes back to that psychological part where it's like, yeah. his mind is ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone does their, they're sweating hard, they're going hard, they're dunking, they're yeah, shooting. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes their minds are there. He's, he's mentally, mentally focusing on the game, mentally getting prepared, and all he cares about is winning. Of course, you can tell. Like he gets stats, but he doesn't mm-hmm. care about the stats. He just he wants. To. He just wants to win. And like, like I said, man, if you can lead the Zucam team, mm-hmm. it's something. Because being Kukui is big, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a solid team. We spoke about them last week. So. And you're not big by his either. No, no, like I yeah. like I played at Concordia. Uh, I got still a lot of friends on that team. Yeah. You know, so like, and they're very talented. So I have them like as favorites right now to win and. Mm-hmm. And for you kind of do that, it's pretty impressive. But they were at home. It's always weird. Yeah. Playing at UCAM, they always have a good crowd. I oh, wish for the whole battle, the home opener, you know? So, like, uh, that's the thing. Concordia's going to bounce back for sure. Yeah. Uh, Bishop's killed, you know, they killed him in Gilmore. Since they're 3 0 right now. Uh, no, no, that's big. Yeah, Bishop, 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 all right. Who's going to leave that? Bye, Chicago. Yeah, you're fans of them. Raptors beat them to it. Oh, yeah, they did? Yeah, like 122. Is that the first one of the season? Just playing. So, yeah. <laughs> so, there's some the Gill guys in, in China, like, four of the starting five in, the, yeah, yeah, in China. Yeah, yeah, So, like, and what is the tournament that they're on? It's a three-on-three. It's a three-on-three. It's like the university three-on-three. I've kind of been out of the They won all of their games, 4-0. Oh yeah, I, I know they're, they're going into the quarter finals yeah, yeah. right now. Like, yeah, yeah, qu- yeah, quarter finals right yeah, now. I believe so. Yeah, and then, like they just won everything for us. Yeah, so yeah. That was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, but Bishop three and is surprising, man. Like, like this is it is. Like surprising. Rod's a good coach. Um, they recruit well. Like I said, they have that nervous guy from Momo D two. Yes, very good. Uh, they have that big guy Thornhill, who's from uh, John Abbott. Uh-huh. Yeah, big man who plays well. Uh, and they just have a solid group of guys, good team chemistry. Um, Do you think this is a team that can upset? Clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clearly. Yeah, yeah. They beat UCAM, UCAM just, I mean, that's what's interesting about the university. Like, in the years I played, mm-hmm. the girl was head and shoulders above everybody, except the year where Bishops picked up a bunch of, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Picked up a bunch of guys like Cal- Calimera and Kareem, uh-huh. and a bunch of old vets that were very, very good, and they all came on the team, kind of like what LeBron did. Kind of, that was basically what they did, they won the championship. <laughs> Yeah, Joe, the middle. There was a lot of good players on that team. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But other than that, McGill was above, you know, so it's yeah. not like everyone was chasing McGill. Now it seems a little bit more even. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's like, we really don't know who's going to win, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's interesting, man. So yeah, if you're not catching up, at, and, and what's cool about the uh, university compared to CJEP is yeah. that they have a lot of live streams. So if, of course, no, that's guys, like, If you guys are yeah. bored, you guys, like, instead of watching like the Warriors murder or something, you guys can just check out uh, a university game on a Thursday night, Saturday night. And it is fun to watch. Like. Yeah, absolutely. Live stream day. Uh, most of them have announcers and stuff. So yeah, exactly. Like, so we actually keep you up. The stats are there, so it's, it's, it's legit, you know? Because it is hard to keep up with, like, you know, high school, CJ, university. But, like, university, like, there's a place to go watch this, so you have time to go ahead yeah, and do it. Sure. Even I was doing that uh, last, I think it was last week, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that was good, man. But, uh, what else? Oh, we got to talk about the biggest news in, in RSQ, right? Sure. Well, we talked about the girls last week about how good they are, how they represent Quebec very well, how there's so much talent here. St. Paul is one of the top teams as well. Yeah. And then I'll let you dive into this. You're more the, the journalist and <laughs> students. So I'll let you dive into it. And also, they mentioned your race, so I'll let you dive into that as well, since uh, yeah, they I pretend both. I'm black, but I'm really not. <laughs> So what had happened is uh, the St. Paul women's basketball team uh, last week, last weekend, I believe. No, last Wednesday. Last Wednesday, last Wednesday, before their game uh, against Momo, uh, three players from the team, I do not remember their names, uh, but three players from the team uh, went on Snapchat, uh, and while they were recording themselves in their locker room, basically just throwing out a bunch of like racist slurs against you know, Muslims, black people, and uh, you know, sort of, as soon as something is on social media, it starts starts running around, and um, those three players all got suspended indefinitely by not the basketball team, but the school period. Um, and the Saint Paul women's team canceled the they canceled the last game 
and they're going to play against, I believe, Dawson, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, but that game has been canceled as well. Yeah. So that kind of made the, a lot of news. Actually, it actually made the news. Yeah, it actually made the news. It actually made the news. It actually made the news. Because we, we heard about it last week. We did. Yeah, we were yeah. conscious of it. But the other thing was, like, we didn't have all full details. We didn't know if we should be the ones to, like, yeah. kind of wait until the news came out. Like, it was literally should. after we filmed the podcast. Yeah, that's true. I got that. Like, we learned about it. Yeah, and actually, we saw the video. Yeah, we saw the video. After. So that's what's crazy. Like, like, it's weird, like, in 2018, like, how people, like, like society has grown a lot. Yeah. Like, people forget that like slavery was legit like seventy years ago. Yeah, Not slavery yeah. was hard, but racism. Yeah, like, racism. Racism like in, like Martin Luther King was legit seventy years ago. Like it wasn't like yeah, yeah. people like it was like five hundred years ago. It's like, something that's so like, very, very 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 present. And it's so prominent in a in a closed minded. I hate to say closed minded because like I mm-hmm. really do like Greg. I like one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can tell us some, the f- difference between French and Anglophone and yeah. then like try and conserve the culture and the language. Mm-hmm. stirs up a lot of this, you know, and it's it's unfortunate that the youth gets influenced by that, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's understandable, like, it's not acceptable, but it's understandable, like, somebody who's 70, who lived here his whole life, is not comfortable yeah, with it's, it's a different mindset, they've lived a completely yeah. different, like, like, it's not the same Montreal or Quebec that it is today, Yeah. Like, so, obviously, it doesn't accept what they yeah. they might say, like, but it's, it's, it's understandable. understandable, yeah, 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 exactly. understand, like, you yeah, know, why? But it's kind of different, it's just fear, it's just fear, yeah, 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 yeah. Which, like, it's human nature to fear the unknown. Yeah, yeah, yeah for, sure, for sure. Any new culture coming in, any new race coming in, and you're unfamiliar with it, mm-hmm. it creates a level of fear, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, just because people don't like change. Exactly. People don't like yeah. these things. So it's understandable for someone in their elder age to be a little bit yeah. still sensitive to the And topic. even me, for like, well, for elders, like, if I do hear some racist slurs or they, they address me in a certain way, like, I don't take offense to it too, too much. Obviously, it's still, like, like, don't say that to me, but, like, yeah. I try and, like, actually have a conversation yeah, with them. Yeah, educate them. They're exactly. a little more open to it, too, sometimes. Exactly. They just, they don't understand. They know? don't, and that's exactly it. They don't understand, but sometimes you got to explain it. They explain some stuff to them, and that's when yeah. they start, they kind of get it. It's just that when you have a melting pot like Montreal, where there's, like, so many cultures, so many different uh, religions mm-hmm. and stuff, like, I mean, there's just... It creates division, unfortunately, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like, I have my religion, I have my culture, I have my race, and this is what it is. But ironically, basketball is one of the things that brings us together, you know? know? And for those girls to say that, from what I heard, I have a player on my team yeah. from St. Foy, okay. a transfer from St. Foy, yeah. um, uh, Mr. Leo. Uh, and he uh, he actually knows the girls. He told yeah. me they're good girls. They, did, they were just joking. They were actually, what he told me is that they were trying to mock the people that speak like that, that yeah. mock the racist Quebecers, mock how they speak and stuff. So it turns out possibly it was just a terrible joke. Yeah, man, I can't really know what yeah. it is. It's just, I mean, leave the jokes to actually funny people, you know? Like, <laughs> like, like I'm funny, he's the good looking one, so that's how we keep it here. He doesn't make jokes, <laughs> and I make jokes. But I mean, and even, I, I did kind of, that did cross my mind. I was like, oh, maybe they are trying to make a joke, but just yeah. the, the whole, like, like... The tone, the way they were doing it. And just the fact it. that you know you're, you're filming in the locker room. Yeah. You're obviously the same fault. Yeah, and they're wearing their jerseys. You have your jerseys. You're representing a school. You're representing a program. Yeah. That was just, like, really yeah. immature. Like, it's just straight stupid, like, honestly, it's like, in my opinion. Yeah, it's not like they're 15 either. They were, like, they're 18, 19 yeah, exactly. like, They're not adults. They're still growing, you know? Yeah, they're still yeah. baby, too. Like, but people grow a lot through those years. Like, 18 to 23, 24 is huge growing periods. Mm-hmm. And trans- tra- transitioning from, like, a child mm-hmm. to an adult, I think. But also, so so yeah, so I thought that was just like a immature move on their part. And, you know, even if it was a joke, that was just totally a bad move. Mm-hmm. So I do, do not stand by anything that they did say or the way they went about it. And especially being in St. Foy, a, a place where unlike Montreal, really, yeah. th- there seems to be a, a kind of a, 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 greater, yeah, a greater divide with you know, all the immigrants coming in and people from different cultures. And they already had already an issue with, uh, there was a shooting at a mosque. Yes, yeah, exactly. A couple yeah. of years ago, like a and year and a half ago. Yeah, last year? Maybe, yeah, a couple, maybe might. Yeah, exactly. It hadn't been too long, but there was a... Like, long, like, it's still, like, it's still fresh in a lot of people's memory. So just bringing that stu- stuff up, definitely a bad move. Obviously, now they're, they're being suspended by the school. Hopefully that they just take the time to, like, you know, think about what they did and hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Well, it's unfortunate because one girl was getting recruited by Concordia. Mm-hmm. And they, got, they cut that off. And another girl was getting recruited by McGill, you know? So, like, 
Let me see. Oh, for your also ruining your the future. future. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So for, for for any kids out there, understand that social media is. It can be fun and games, but understand that at one point you're representing yourself as well. Like it's yeah. it's self marketing. Like you can have fun. Like if I'm mean, I have an Instagram which is pure jokes and like there's some inappropriate jokes there and I, I understand. I even got in trouble when I was at Concordia. Mm -hmm. uh, so like um, that was a great meme. So I'm not even worried about that. But um, uh, <laughs> there's just, just a time and place for yeah, everything. Yeah, right? just be smart. Just be smart because your future is super important, man. Universities look at that. If you're trying to go to the states, if you're going to go into Grad school and all that. You have to be conscious that even employers look at that. Like I, I've been a manager of multiple places, and when I got a CV, I was just look into the Instagram or Facebook mm -hmm. to see exactly what kind of person this is, and just be conscious of what you're representing yourself as, because it's like it's important. Sure, sure, sure. So, um, yeah, so let's go a little lighter, dude. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we're about to one uh, Friday, six, 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 six and zero, stay undefeated, but that was tough. Yeah, we're going by 10. That was 10, we're going by 10, I think. But yeah, yeah, they come back, though, uh, at the end of the year. Yeah, that's, this was tough about being a coach, because you like, you have half of it where you're like, man, I want the team to play great. Yeah. I want them to play perfect. Like, and then you're frustrated with their effort, with their focus, and you're like, you're only looking at that, you know? Mm -hmm. like, but what's super important, and like, like you know I like dropping some gems sometimes, and I'll just think about it. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, listen, guys. This is pure education for anybody out there. Like, this is the serious part. Like, no more jokes. Yeah, no, this, this is NTO, it's not NT Graham. So, uh, sorry, that's Russ, uh, probably one of his girls. Shout out. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, sorry. The thirst is distracting me. Um, you about to drop some gems. gems. Okay, guys, like, this is for all aspects of life. This is like, this is where I compare the ball and life. You know, yeah. so like, every team needs to go through adversity. Like if you don't go through adversity, it is impossible that you're gonna win. Mm -hmm. Just like when the, the Warriors, what they're 73 and 10, or 73 and yeah. 9, they were having bad injuries the whole year, went through, and then unfortunately the finals, Draymond gets suspended, adversity hits, they crumble. You know, the Fab Five, mm -hmm. Crumbled in the in the finals twice, two years in a row. Perfect seasons. Adversity hit, they broke. Yeah. You know, and then it happens all the time. You know, like the Patriots, undefeated season, get to the Super Bowl, a couple lucky catches mm -hmm. from the Giants, and they crumble. Friendships, relationships, you hit adversity, and it's like that. You know, that's what like it's important to have that. Like it's important to build character. You know, mm -hmm. your adversity. Like that's why I tell people like. Failure and all this stuff is good for you because, like, if you don't get your heart broken, if you don't fail class, if you don't get fired, if you don't get injured, you're not gonna grow. Yeah. You're gonna stay stagnant, and it's like you fall in your eyes. You fall, then rise. Oh yeah, that was that's good. That was that was good. Oh man, that was literally perfect to be a fucking celebrate. <laughs> oh man, but now there's no yeah. But um, <laughs> seriously, so that's all I'm saying, guys. Like. If anything happens, like in my case, like I try to compare yeah. this, like, uh, like, like, if I meet for myself, I've had adversity with different aspects of my life, friendships, relationships, and like, it's only helped them grow, you know, or they break. But then you understand that if you hit adversity, adversity, mm -hmm. and their relationship breaks, but the foundation wasn't strong. If you're playing basketball and a team breaks, you know that they never really, it's all fake confidence, you know? Mm -hmm. So like for my team to come, so the thing was we were really frustrated. At halftime we were frustrated. Our team wasn't focusing. They weren't really ex executing. Uh, there's a and like not to take anything away against Edward. Like Edward played great. Yeah, yeah. Pascal Jobain is a legit coach. Uh, he uh, coaches at McGill as well, yeah. so he has credibility, and I've I know him quite uh, well as well. Yeah. He, he's a good coach, you know. So like they came prepared. They executed well offensively. They were executing well. Uh, Jonathan Noel played great. I mean he's. An amazing athlete. I mean, you know, he should be able to help any university team. Hopefully, mm -hmm. um, if anybody doesn't know about him, check him out. He can uh, lefty, quite athletic. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the basket pretty well, finished really well. So they played well. Like, they came out, they punched us in the face. Our guys didn't really take it. Um, uh, then in the second half, that's when coaches got look at us. You know, we kind of like realized, okay, we gotta help them make some adjustments too. Like we don't just be focused on them. Uh, we inserted one of our rookies, Carl, mm -hmm. um, and he made a huge. Yeah, Carl. Yeah, Carl. Carl. I mean, 
the thing is, like, I respect grinders. Like, yep. grinders are just, like, I appreciate them. Like, like, we got a couple, like, my, like, everyone used to joke, like, I had my, my son, William, Wade, they mm-hmm. like, my son last year. Like, people used to joke. But, like, he's my little brother because, like, he's a grinder. Yeah. Like, he's a grinder, grinder, grinder. Like, he made himself who he is today. Like, Mike helped him a great amount. Uh, he's a great coach, taught him a lot, but he's just a grinder, man. He's in the gym, he's working hard, he's studying tape, he's eating well, he's stretching. The kids are grinds, he just grinds. And then Carl, so Carl was borderline, like, is he a D1 player, is he not? This, this, you know, discussing it. But his grinding mentality, he just came in, and it's funny, he's a rookie, and all our bets followed him. Yeah, they yeah. all followed him. You know, Seb played great, uh, Sammy played well, he had a couple timely shots, Deshante hit a huge three. Just out of nothing, terrible offense, he just pulled up. I was yeah, like, all right, I guess that's what it is. You know, no, no. Um, Carl hit a big three, defensively was fantastic. So, like, like, that was like, it's weird. Like, it's such a weird thing. It's like, it's like you get, like, you get in a fight, like, with your best friend, you know? Yep. And, like, I think you were there last week. You were, so, we were at a little business meeting for Hoops on a Rise. Yeah. And me and Jonathan mm-hmm. got, or our other partner, um, he got to a little argument, and I uh, just like I was tired. I was tired of it, and I just left. You know? No, 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 no. You stormed out. I stormed out. Yeah, I stormed out. I was just tired. Stormed I out. was having a long day. We <laughs> had a lot of things happen that day, and it was just like, but like I met, like I left, and he mentioned like, yo, uh, you know, shit, that, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. You know, there's no stress. There's yeah. no because the foundation's strong. You know? Yeah. yeah. So once the foundation of that, so if our team is strong, that's what shows strength. Like we faced my adversity, they figured it out in the fourth quarter. Yeah. You know? So that was good for that victory. But Edward, a problem, man. Like yeah. they switch up their defenses, they can confuse you. Yeah. Um and offensively they they play as a team, man. So yeah. but I mean that's why I mean that's why adversity that's why I transition to our next topic, the NBA. Yeah, with the NBA with all the Warriors drama that there exactly. was last week between Draymond and K D. So just to that, so you're saying that that adversity is going to be beneficial. Oh, super yeah. beneficial. Like, yeah, I think Draymond Green said it. He's like, if you guys thought we were a problem now, I think about it. Just went yeah. after. Like, so like that adversity is super key. But mm-hmm. you need that. You need to have that. Or like, like Jordan said it. Like, it's like I missed like whatever how many shots. Yeah, yeah. And like, I feel it over and over. And, and that's, that's why I succeed. Yeah. Or, like one of his greatest quotes. And like, that's the thing. Like, you just have to build a strong foundation. And, the Warriors Foundation is so strong that it won't break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It won't break. So yeah, like, that combined with the talent as well. Yeah, like they've lost a couple games. Mm-hmm. They figure out Curry's not playing. Curry's a big part of that. He yeah, brings yeah, a lot sure. of, not even just his talent, but he brings a lot of joy. It brings a lot of, of like, like passion to the game that the Warriors follow. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, for, for those same reasons, I think a lot of people were saying that, like, oh, like, the, this is like the end of the, the Warriors 90s theory or whatever. I'm just like, Okay, they're having some fight. It's not the first time that it's happening yeah, with the Warriors. And who's fights, been done? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, fights. Like, it's unfortunate, but like, in any team I've been, I've been, like, one of my good friends, Brian O'Foy, he's playing mm-hmm. pro in Spain now. Me and him got to a legit fight. Like, I haven't talked to him for like three days. Yeah, yeah. Me and William, me and William, William, we played one on one last year in the summer, and we both like to talk trash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it escalated to a, a, not a very respectable point. And okay. um, I won that game. <laughs> And uh, yeah, he knows. And, like, <laughs> we didn't talk for like a good two days, man. <laughs> I was like, a good two days, we didn't talk because it was, yeah, yeah. But then you come back and the foundation's strong, you know? So that's why all my relationships I try to build a strong foundation because fighting, like, arguing is going to happen because you're paying close with someone. So, like, Dream on it. The kid, you guys have to understand, they're with each other all the time, man. All the, no matter how much you like someone, if you're with them all the time, mm-hmm. little things they do is going to annoy you, something's going to annoy you. Then you're having just a regular bad day, you're hungry, whatever, you know, you didn't sleep well, mm-hmm. and it triggers something, then you get into a fight, you know? So like, especially, especially like a team like the Warriors that's always winning, everything's always good, yes. and stuff like that is bound to happen. Exactly, that's, like, that's, like, that's what I'm saying, like, that's why you're in a perfect relationship, like mm-hmm. you know, the girl's perfect, you're perfect, you guys are happy together. And then like one little thing will trigger it, you know? It's yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, you ate my Oreos. And it's like, you snap on that, you know? It's like, oh yeah, my yeah. God, you know? And then like, it's like, it's not about that. It's just mm-hmm. the fact that you're not used to adversity. You yeah, know? Right. So yeah, that's why like, people skip steps. You know, you, get, you, can't, you can't skip any steps yeah, in life, you know? So you can't skip building that foundation. So the Warriors, I feel they're gonna just go, what's everyone's back? Yeah, everyone's back, like he's 
probably will go on like a 15, 20 game win streak. Mm -hmm. And then everyone's be like, oh, the Warriors are stacked. Yeah, exactly. like, they're back to it. Now, right now they're all vulnerable. They're like, oh, yeah. the Rockets killed them. Like, oh, man, the Rockets are back. And, mm -hmm. like, and they're skateboarding. Freaking my, one of my favorite players ever, Carmelo. Carmelo. Y'all hate, hate too that. much. Y'all hate that. too much, man. So Carmelo Anthony got released by the Rockets after just playing 10 games. And I think... I think it was total BS, in my opinion, because I feel like the Rockets are obviously struggling right now in the beginning of the season, and I think they're just trying to find somebody to blame like, right away, and especially because already there were concerns coming into the season with adding Melo into the mix, so I feel now that things are going bad, they're just trying to like blame it on somebody, and it's unfortunate that, that it's him. Yeah, because he's legit. Like, I know most of the young people, especially like you, like you're more of a basketball as so you do your, you know, your history, but he was a unstoppable from like 2005 to like 2011. Melo is one of those guys like back when I was playing but even now like that's a guy like I stood. Yeah like, legit no. I just want to like how is he dominating all the time? You know mid range pull, like post yeah. up with the size and everything. Yeah. It's just little tricks here and there. So the yeah and I remember watching like I was a young kid man I think I was like 12 when he mm -hmm. won 12, 13 when he won his uh his championship, mm -hmm. so it was just it was wild, man. Like he led Syracuse to a championship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Syracuse hasn't won since. Like mm -hmm. he did it as a freshman. Like it's, it's crazy. Yeah, like he he was special, man. He was special, and it's just unfortunate that like I'm on like I love memes and stuff, but like mm -hmm. I'm on Instagram and just meme after meme just destroying him. And I'm just like, come on, guys. I think he's not washed up. That's what I'm saying. And I think this year as well. I do think I think he learned after the season with OKC that now he has to fitted into a certain role. Yeah. He's not the same level as yeah. before. And I think he knows that now. Yeah. That's why I'm like, this is unfortunate that yeah. you know the Rockets are taking it up on him. The thing is the Rockets act like that's the only difference from last year's team, but they get they lost Trevor Reza, mm -hmm. they lost Ryan Anderson. Look about Mute as well. Yeah, exactly. So they yeah. lost two of their best defenders and then they lost Ryan Anderson who's a legit shooter. Mm -hmm. And it's like and then what? Mellis was coming to replace three yeah, exactly. guys. Like, and that's sense. on management as well, like, yeah, legit. If if you look at the Warriors, for example, one of the reasons they have all that talent, everybody on that squad, management and ownership, they do want to pay uh, luxury tax, yeah. right? Rockets could have done the same thing. And last year, they were so close from going to the finals. Like, if it's not for a Chris Paul injury, who, yeah, exactly. who knows what could have happened? Yeah. So ownership was well aware of that, but they didn't want to take the necessary steps to improve their team. Right, and keep those core guys. Um, and now you bring in Melo, things are not going good, and you want to blame it on him. When part of the problem is because of management and ownership. That's just people can't look at themselves. You know, whenever there's an issue or concern, mm -hmm. people are so easily like they'll pull you point fingers. But it's like you know, ninety percent of the time, man, whatever is happening in your life is just a reflection of what you're like mm -hmm. you're creating. You know, mm -hmm. your mind creates any scenario you want. You know, like. Mm -hmm. So that's the unfortunate part about it. Like, because now the Rockets got worse. Yeah, they got worse. They got worse now. They were already worse. Yeah. Obviously, with Melo, they, they, they could have added something. Yeah, they, they beat the Warriors, and now it's like, oh, okay, they're back. But it's like, no, the Warriors are going through their own little like, thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, Curry's not playing. Like, it's a whole different thing. Like, mm -hmm. It's crazy, man. But like, talk about additions. Jimmy Butler actually Jimmy Butler, he already, he already made his presence be felt up. I'm impressed, man. Against Charlotte, you know, uh, block at the... Uh, at the end of the game against Charlotte, uh, was it was the block on Kemba as well? Yeah, I think Kemba. Kemba who dropped sixty points, six against Philly. No, Kemba's max five eleven, man. Max six, five six. eleven. No, yo, if he six. listed at six, yo, he's listed at six one, I think. Yeah, so he's probably That's five six, eleven. Though. No, like, he's he's that, that 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 like, yo, know, I swear when the uh, Iverson got drafted, he was six two or something like that. Really? Yeah, and then like by the end of his career, he's six <laughs> six. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I think it's shorter than like <laughs> 10 years, so you gotta be careful with that because, like, yo, the states they lie about that stuff all yeah, the time. Yeah. All I mean, Katie's listed at like 6 nights or 10. Yeah, Katie's lying too because he's supposed to be he's like 7 12. 7 12? Tall, 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 t
Yeah, man. But yeah, then he hit the game where that's a cold, big game. Yeah. cold yeah. blood shot. Man. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's what six you're kind of missing because Ben Simmons can't really do anything in the clutch yeah. because he can't shoot. Then you go to Joel, but if he's getting doubled, they kind of just let yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben Simmons alone. So now you have a guy that you can just give the ball to and get out of the way. And he's willing to do it. Yeah, yeah, and he's been clutch his whole career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been clutch with the Bulls, he was clutch with the Minnesota, he was clutch, he had some game winners. Mm-hmm. No, I think that's a, that's a good ad for the, for the Sixers. I still don't think they're better than the Raptors or Celtics. Um, even we, well, we lost to, to the Celtics and yeah, and Kyrie, OT. yeah, but Kyrie, but Kyrie, was like, Kyrie was like, like bananas. Yeah. Yeah. But Kyrie, yo, Kyrie is so nasty. He is so nasty. Because like, like, everything he does is like, there's a lot of sauce. Like he's lost. He, he he's lost. To, he's just because he wants to. Like he yeah, could do things so simple. He's like, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm like, just how he dribbles, how he moves, it's just so smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So smooth. Do yeah. you yeah. think he has the best handles of all time? All time? All time. I might have to get it to him. Because you have like Tim Hardaway, who's disgusting. You had Iverson, obviously, yeah. who's disgusting. He can do so. Jay Williams is nasty too, with white chocolate. Mm-hmm. Um, what was his birthday? He's going to be today. Yeah. Was that why Ball's life was or something? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Birthday. Um, and what else? Um, he said, hey, uh, yeah, Tim Hardaway. What was that? Some nice handles. Well, well, Steph now. Nah. Steve Francis. Steve Francis, yeah. Steve Francis has some nice handles. Um, Brandon Davis has some nice handles too. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Uh, but uh, yeah. But yeah, I think Kyrie like by far the best. Yeah. Yeah. Was, but yeah, it was sorry. Yeah, it was really just not an eventful week. Really, yeah, not, not nothing too crazy happened. Our SQ was kind of calm. Yeah, man. Do you have any other you want to talk about? What did I want to talk about? Well, I was gonna ask you. Like, do you think uh, we were talking about Melo? Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people think that he should retire now. Do you think that's something you should? No, I think you should go to the Warriors. And <laughs> that's not the Warriors do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. your career is going down the drain? Just yeah. come over and yeah. I'll yeah. squad yeah. with him. No, but listen, he'll come and play even better. They'll use him properly. Yeah. They'll put him in good positions. Yeah, yeah. He's going to look fantastic. He'll drop some games in 20, 30. And, then, and I was going to, oh, the Warriors are so stacked. They have Carmelo. But it's like, I thought Carmelo was trash. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. everybody, they're like, oh, they have Javel McGee. Everyone yeah, yeah. laughed at Javel McGee. You know? <laughs> like, oh, they have David West. He's like 40. It's like, Wherever the worst pick of a guy that gets better, like no one wanted Sean Livingston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andre Bell was an okay player. Yeah, yeah. Like these guys were not wanting, no one wanted to draft Draymond Green. Yeah. No one knew who Clay Thompson exactly. was. Like Steph Curry was not. Well, like, you could have known, been, but like. There were some doubts about him. Yeah, there's a lot of doubts about him, you know? And it's like, they're acting like yeah, when Zaza yeah. was there, they're like, oh, that's <laughs> not. And it's like, Zaza played well. You know? yeah, so yeah. Carmelo was there, played great. So for my advice for Carmelo is to retire or go to the Warriors. And that's it. That's I it. know I heard someone say like, oh, you go to China or something. But just because China pays so much, right? Go get like 200 million real quick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah say, go China too, you know? Like, you need some money. Yeah, yeah, go for good food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. So yeah, yeah. 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 probably yeah, 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 man. Before we finish, I just want to make sure I mention that LeBron is fifth all-time in scoring. Put some respect on my man's name. That's not nothing. Fifth all-time in scoring. I just wanted to make sure I put that. Yes. Right. Well, he's still not number one, so he sucks. He might. He might. I know that's the worst price. He's getting kind of scary close. Like, if he passes yeah. Jordan, would be really sad. Oh yeah. Be really Jordan, sad. Jordan is next up, man. Yeah, but Jordan played less seasons. Like a lot less seasons. So, a lot less seasons. Okay. A lot less games. LeBron's so, still next. He's alright. He's still. He's getting better. Uh, Maybe next year. No disrespect. Like that. He even dropped. He dropped 44 that game, bro. Uh, 44, 10, and 9. Uh, who they play? Better than your kids. No, he's not. Have you seen your kids? God, bro. Okay, oh, he's games? been playing like he, the, the game against New Orleans. Good. Yeah, I think Davis had problems with it, but. Uh, Daddy Davis went off to the team. Yeah, that's a lot of good things in NBA, man, the RSQ. But, like, we try to focus more on Quebec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quebec was a little bit more quiet this week, so we didn't really have too much um, to talk about other than the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I also don't want to give them too much attention, like, that. Like, people like that don't deserve it. But, yeah. So, any, like, any last words you got? Or, um, I, think, I think that covers about everything. Uh, obviously, everybody watching 
who everybody who did watch to the end, if you actually did, I know there's only like a couple people yeah. who actually watched the whole thing. Shout out to my yeah. mom. Yeah. No, shout, shout out, out to Kiwi. Kiwi. Even though Kiwi probably won't watch it all the way to the end. <laughs> It's all good. So people who did watch it to the to the end, shout out to y'all. Uh, even I don't have that type of patience sometimes. So thank y'all for watching. Yeah. If you do have any suggestions about the show, uh, make sure to let us know in the comments down below. Oh, that right? No, not bad. Oh, that's a large six. And uh, obviously follow us uh, at Fall and Rise Pod on Instagram. Follow Hoops on the Rise on Instagram. Follow HOTR Apparel as well. Uh, yeah, I think that covers that's my good challenge. Yeah. My little thing, my last words would be, yo, the adversity thing is true, guy. Accept it, embrace it. Like, search it out. Again. Like, if life is going too good, create some adversity. Like, make, make things harder on yourself. Because it'll just make your life better, you better, your relationship better, make your girl better, make your friends better, make your team better. And that's all. Like, seriously. So, like, that's some real challenge. Again, again, fall and rise. Every day. Alright, that's, that's the bottom. Okay. We have a shout out to Swell. Drink your water, guys. <laughs> <laughs>